Thank you, Wendy. And now for the third piece of research and focus today, I'd like to invite Chanindri Pilipalawa, Vice President Marketing and Soft Logic Live, to present her research titled The Mom Factor How Female Traits Transform Across Life Stages and Its Impact on the Nation. Thank you. Um, if you were listening to the previous presenters, I think something that obviously came up was for moms, especially working moms, things get really rough. Um, and if that is the case, Robin Sharma's quote, rough seas make great sailors, is this much more applicable to working moms? Could mom Monks captain a ship through all the chaos better than anyone else. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chandra and I am a working mom with two beautiful I'm, uh, I'm a mom with two beautiful kids. And I personally witnessed how my mom factor completely transformed me both personally and professionally from the time I gave birth. And I was able to know whether this was the same for every mom. And Trying to find answers to this, I actually stumbled upon a great opportunity when I started my MSc in business psychology. Uh, and I started looking for answers through this. But that was not the only reason why I uh, wanted answers. In the industry that I was operating in, uh, which is insurance, I saw an alarming stat. I think this is common to most industry, where there is a steep decline in female representation when it comes to reaching the leadership levels. Uh, but while this is apparent in most industries, in insurance, this was even more pronounced. And locally, it was so much more. But uh, I think the shocking factor here was that global insurance was deemed as a place that women could thrive. And what was really the issue? An entire ecosystem fully built for women to lead. It was found that women leaders in male-dominated settings are devalued owing to their traits or the roles that they play. First, culturally, the unequal responsibility is really way on women, especially moms. Then on top of that, organizations really penalize them on it through pay gaps, recruitment, promotions, whatnot, because of the perceived lack of certain traits as leaders and the increased roles that they have to play. And as a result, women, especially moms, leave jobs or opt for slow progressing careers. And as organizations, we completely lose the moms in our equation. But I must mention that inclusion of women in leadership is critical now more than ever. Why do I say that? Companies don't look for bosses, Anymore. Companies don't look for technical experts to lead anymore. Instead, they look for leaders who can actually create an environment where people, where their employees, where their teams can thrive, where leaders focus on careers of employees, where leaders focus on well being, where leaders focus on inclusion within their teams. And McKinsey says that top ranking leadership behaviors for the future includes. Driving intellectual stimulation, inspirational motivation, practicing participatory decision making, people development, and acting as role models. All of these are synonymous to transformational leadership that Kavita spoke of initially. And surprisingly, women were seen practicing these so much more than men. Now, this is a general story for all women. But I, my question was can moms do it better? Is there a X factor in how moms do it. Sorry. So, trying to answer this question, my research question basically. Uh, it was all about trying to understand how female traits evolve across life stages from single to motherhood and how this really impacts leadership. And I did this for this uh, insurance sector, but I specifically focused on five traits 
namely openness. How open are you to ideas, different people, to other people's opinions? Extroversion. How introverted or extroverted are you? Agreeableness. How willing are you uh, to somebody else's opinion? Are you willing to keep your opinion aside and take someone else's opinion if it had credit? Conscientiousness. How set are you in your ways? And how much do you enforce those set ways on others? Neuroticism. How emotionally stable are you? And the fun things that I got words. First question I want to know is how important is it to be heard by your leader? In other words, how can openness really impact transformational leadership? Past literature said that high openness would see influence in transformational leaders. But my findings also confirm this with a bigger shift in terms of openness seen amongst moms. And this was the influencing the ability to be agile in this ever-changing world. Imagine if you're so open that people don't feel afraid to come up to you, walk up to you and give any idea. And mothers would see having the biggest change here. Next, I want to know, is it really important for a leader to make a team feel included? In other words, how important is agreeableness towards transformational leadership? Past literature said that high agreeableness is the strongest, most consistent predictor of transformational leadership. My findings also confirm the same. But again, in this case, months were seen uh, shifting the modes in this area. And they thought that this is one of the most important traits influencing leadership. And interestingly, what I found was that young mothers achieved maturity towards being agreeable way faster than even an older married suitor with no kids. And what they said was, you know, kids force you to bend, be more empathetic at the end of the day, it's your kid, you have no option but to bend. Uh, and they understood that Gen Z's won't stick with you if you don't approach them with a sense of agreeableness. And at the end of the day, they said, you can't run a team if you're not willing to disregard your point of view if someone else is, is better. Next, I wanted to know how important is it for a leader to find order in chaos? This world right now, it's all about chaos. In other words, how important is consciousness, conscientiousness in terms of driving transformation and leadership? Here, past literature said that women in general are seen highly conscientious, but that was seen as a negative towards transformation and leadership. But here, my findings would agree and disagree with that. Yes, women are more set in their ways, but still they were seen transformation. Why was this? When marriage increased conscientiousness in women, motherhood countered it towards striking a balance. What it said was the mom factor changed the direction of conscientiousness among, even amongst the most impossible ones. And one uh, respondent said that the perfection is the need. Learn to be okay with edges. And with the right back, this doesn't say that you should lose your consciousness. But what it said was, you need to find the right balance. Because in a world of your structure is important, and especially with the emergency. And how they came in, uh, uh, became useful or transformational was because the consciousness was looked at from a dependability and responsibility sense of it, where it triggered ethical and inclusive part of creation. The next question I wanted to answer is for is being emotional a bad thing for a leader? The big question that all of us ladies really ask themselves. Uh, in other words, how can neuroticism impact in transnational leadership? Past literature said that high neuroticism in women results in poor transformation leadership. But here's what I found. I found it all, I mean, I, in my research, it also agreed and disagreed into certain levels. Yes, high neuroticism negatively impacted transformation leadership, but what was interesting was moms due to kids and added responsibility were seen reducing their neuroticism. And what this meant was don't lose your emotional uh, ability as a woman, but finding the right balance was key, especially in this volatile world, and especially when dealing with gender. And what is 
No interesting words, new activities that you were found to be a core role in regulating the other trades. Imagine if you're questioning yourself, imagine if you don't trust your team and you're emotionally always questioning, how can you be open? How can you be agreeable? How can you really let somebody do their own thing and trust that your team will make it work, right? So this was seen as a very emotionally important shape in all of the mission. Finally, does being the leader, does being a leader, or does being the loudest in a room define a leader? We, are, we always face this question, you know, stand up, voice your thoughts. Yes, you need to. But what past literature said was high extroversion actually is the strongest and most consistent shape towards transformational leadership, but my research debunked this completely. What it said was, you don't have to be the loudest in the room to be a leader. Extroversion doesn't define a leader. You can be an introvert and still be a leader. And what was interesting here was that women didn't seem to change whether they were an extrovert or an introvert, it remained uh, the same. But what we saw was they intentionally changed their extroversion. Especially if you, a, if you look at a mom who has kids, if she was extremely extroverted before, now she suddenly might seem introverted because she now has the priorities and she might not attend the next uh, networking session. But that doesn't mean that this person is an introvert or an extrovert. And this was seen completely unrelated to transformation leadership. In summary, mom leaders were seen made to be transformational because of the environment that they go through and the life stages that they go through. And Takeda said that this is a period where one's identity becomes to be redefined. You literally create your 2.0 version here. And one respondent said that upbringing made me a leader, motherhood, motherhood flipped me and took me to a different level and was more significant than my best leadership training. And why so? Well, kids have the biggest role here. Kids really replace rigidness with flexibility. They challenge you to come to be closed up. They challenge you to be approachable. They challenge you to be empathetic. And they really force you to value another person's views. And moms understood that there is no way living with Gen Z without openness, agreeableness, and emotional stability. Not just, women were just not, or moms were just not made. They were also born to be transformational. Let me give you a psychological perspective here. If you look at men, they're naturally very agentic. I think how you mentioned this, where they are all about me. They're very task oriented and they see success coming uh, because of their own efforts. But women, on the other hand, are communal. They're all about the we. They focus on relationships and they see uh, and they see themselves successful only if people around them succeed. And when you become a mom, this we factor amplifies even further. This, what I showed you, shows that women or moms have a big role to play in leadership. But what are the implications of not having a leader? Not showing the way shortens the life cycle of career women. Why do I say this? There is this wrong perception amongst people that motherhood ends your career. In my research, uh, one thing that I found was the primary reason for majority across all cohorts to consider taking drastic decisions, including quitting, was motherhood. And this, mind you, was the perception even among spinsters who haven't even experienced motherhood. Even research shows that the household and child responsibility is a reason for this. I think Indira I know really kind of holds it in the right way, saying the biological clock and the career clock are in total conflict with each other, which is why there are need to be women at the top leading the way, especially moms, and showing them because the future generation is looking up to you and thinking probably being a mother might end my career and that is where we need to change. Secondly, not creating an inclusive route to leadership is a loss to the company. Why do I say this? At the beginning, I said that there was a 68% degrowth from a junior to leadership point where we lose women. Right now, what you showed in terms of research showed that women uh, really come to this point where they're at their best. We as organizations train them, spend time on them, spend resources on them, and bring them right to the peak of the mountain and we just drop the ball. 
right? And mindful disease, when a mom becomes, when, when a woman becomes a mom, their ambition at work becomes so much more pronounced. So why are we really losing them when they're their best? Thirdly, this is more from an insurance perspective. Missing out on business opportunities to penetrate the market. But this is, again, as a concept, might be applicable to a lot of industries. Insurance for decades have been looked at from a mere lens only. Even today, insurance in Sri Lanka, the penetration really broke. And why do I say that this might have an issue with looking at it from a mere lens only? Point number one, moms have always been a forgotten consumer for insurance. 33.4% plus women are economically active, 23% plus are breadwinners. Insurance research shows that insurance is even easier to be sold to women than men, but still the remain uh, the focus still remains on men. Secondly, insurance in Sri Lanka is synonymous with fraud for decades, and more than 9% of insurance agents have been males, and they have had a role to play here in the business. But can we really change this? You see, women could solve this decade-old issue. Let me tell you why. Women being highly sanctioned is connected with being highly ethical. Probably a solution that would have come if there was a mom or a woman at the top. There is more that can be done in organizations by including women in the equation, especially moms. I had a question that I wanted answers when I started my MSc, and my answer that I told was loud and clear, yes, the mom factor truly transforms you into becoming a better leader. But the question to you, the audience, is what are you going to do about it when you get back to your organization? I am proud to say that I lead like a mom because that is what I am to my team. Let me leave you with this. The number one skill companies focus on developing in a post-COVID era is leadership and managing others. Mind you, this doesn't mean that leadership is required only at the top. Even the junior most person needs leadership. And this shows how important it is to show the way and the right kind of people showing how leadership is done in organizations. People don't say, or around the world don't say, lead like a dad or lead like a married person or I don't know, whatever. But they do say, lead like a mom. In a world where there's so much chaos, where things are so volatile, leading like a mom can bring out the best in your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shani Ray, and 